Now, methods of describing sets. We also we have called a listing method or roster method. So, for example, we have a set C. We have our braces. We have red, green, yellow, blue. This is a roster method. Capital N here is equal to 1, 2, 3 with a dot, dot, dot. This would represent natural numbers. Same thing with here, L, which is equal to the set A, B, C, D, dot, dot, dot with lowercase letters. Now, if you notice here, those three dots represent an ellipsis, which continues in the same manner. So therefore, you're just shortening writing out the set by using those three dots. Now, one of the things you want to be clear of is the notation. We're going to call this set builder notation. So when we think about the set notation, you can see that C represents set C. We have the equal sign, which is is equal to. We have this first brace, which says the set of X being all elements X. This line represents such that. And then here we say that X is an element of this n, which is the natural numbers, and we would say that x is less than 5. So again, this is how you're reading set builder notation. Now, in set builder notation, again, c, which is equal to x such that, or all x such that x is an element of natural numbers, and x is less than 5. A comma is often a placeholder for the word and. So with this notation, we can put a comma in there, and that would represent and. So they both mean the same thing. So both conditions where x is an element of the natural numbers and x is less than 5 must be true in order for x to be an element of C. Now, in set builder notation, any lowercase letter can be used to represent a general statement. Set builder notation is useful when the individual elements of a set are not known or they are too numerous to list. So, for example, the set of decimals between 0 and 1 can be written as the following. The set D is equal to the set of all elements X such that X is a decimal between 0 and 1. Now, it would be impossible to list all the elements of D so set builder notation is indispensable.